Welcome friends, I'm so glad that you've tuned in today. I'm gonna be sharing today with my son Aaron. We're gonna be talking about building relationships and living with purpose. In fact, the relationships that you keep will affect how much you're able to fulfill your God-given purpose in this life. So stay tuned, keep your ears open. You're gonna receive great revelation that will help you move into God's purpose and plan. Blessings. Friends, it's so good to have you today on the broadcast. We've been sharing all this week about vision. And uh, we really talked about last week about what vision is. Mm -hmm. And we talked about how vision works. This week, we've been talking specifically about our ministry vision, our church vision, which is to know Jesus, experience grace, build relationships, and live with purpose. Mm -hmm. And we really talked about, you know, salvation, healing, right? Um, we talked about freedom. freedom. And we talked about provision, mm -hmm. and and it really comes through these four things: through mm -hmm. knowing Jesus, experience grace, building relationships, and living with purpose. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to continue. We were talking yesterday about building relationships and how uh, important that is. You know, it, building relationships is part of basic Christianity. Mm -hmm. You know, Acts two forty two says, speaking of the early church, they continued in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in the breaking of bread and prayers. When you look at that, they continued in the word, mm -hmm. they continued in church, mm -hmm. they continued in relationships, and they continued in prayer. Mm -hmm. And I talked about a little bit yesterday about how when I first started in ministry, I told people, you need to be in the word, you need to be in church, you need to be in prayer. But after a few years of ministry in the same church, seeing the same people week after week, some people really growing and prospering, other people not growing and not prospering. Mm -hmm. I kind of looked and said, you know, the difference between the people that are growing and prospering and the people that aren't, mm -hmm. many times is their relationships. Mm -hmm. So you need to build relationships with strong people of like faith. Mm -hmm. And that will help you get where God wants you to go and do what God wants you to do. Mm -hmm. I thank God for the relationships that God has given me. Mm -hmm. God gives us relationships, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. He really does. So talk about some of the relationships that God gives us. Well, God, um, God actually works through relationships. He, you can't a accomplish everything He's called you to do on your own, right? And uh, some people have that mentality, like I'm the only one. I, I, I have to do this on my own. I have to do everything God's called me to do on my own. I have to do this, you know, kind of this Lone Ranger type mentality, right. you know, kind of like the Eli Elijah, like I'm the only one. I'm the, I'm the only prophet in all of Israel. I'm the only <laughs> one who hasn't bowed to Baal. I, and God said, "There's fifty thousand more." And they said there's 7,000. 7,000 more. Well, there, there, there might have been even more, you know, but they haven't bowed their knee to Baal. Well, that's a that, large number at that's that a, that's point. That's a very in large number. And there are probably other people, um, you know, so, so you, you're not the only one. No. You know, it's been said if you want to go far, go with a team. Mm -hmm. If you want to go fast, go alone. Mm -hmm. And so we, we need a team of people. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do what I'm doing without a team of people. Mm -hmm. We got so many people that volunteer, that help, that serve. Mm -hmm. And and really, uh, we just do better in relationships. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for, for God-given relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, God is the one who gives us relationships. Mm -hmm. Some people struggle, say, well, I have no friends. Well, ask God to give you friends. Mm -hmm. God will give you a friend. Mm -hmm. God will give you uh, people. Now, there's, there's different aspects of relationships. Mm -hmm. There's relationships in the home and in the family. Mm -hmm. There's relationships in your place of employment, mm -hmm. in your work. Mm -hmm. There's relationships in the church. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of different relationships. Mm -hmm. And we need to honor godly relationships. Mm -hmm. I've tried to honor the relationships that God's give, given me. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says your own friend and your father's friend do not forsake. So mm -hmm. my dad died when I was just 17. But if I knew someone was my dad's friend, I come from a rural community Southeast Colorado, if I knew someone was my dad's friend, I've tried to still be a friend to them, mm -hmm. right? If they're my friend, I try to keep my friendships, mm -hmm. right? 
I've had people that have put me out. Dr. Lester Summerall said, if somebody draws a circle and puts you on the outside, draw a bigger one and put them on the inside. Mm -hmm. I've recently done that mm -hmm. with some people that put me on the outside. Well, yeah, you know? it's good to just have a heart that's quick to forgive. Right. I so, want to move forward. I, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to cut off relationships. Mm -hmm. And some people just, boy, as soon as they think they're not going to gain something from somebody, mm -hmm. as soon as it's not lucrative for them, they cut it off. Yeah, and just this kind of what a terrible attitude. People just hold a grudge forever, and and uh, yeah, I know some people. It's just like the boy it's, unforgiveness. This, it's, will a, trip it's a religious you spirit, really. When you just have this grudge against someone, and it just consumes you. It's a very, it's like a, it's yeah, a spiritual it thing. Yeah, get over it, and that's not easy sometimes. Mm -hmm. But you still can do it by mm -hmm. the grace of God. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had people really hurt me, and God's. I've told said, God, I forgive them. Mm -hmm. Help me forgive them. And mm -hmm. God will help you forgive mm -hmm. people. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we talked about part of basic Christianity, the danger of separation. You know, the, the Bible says, and we read this scripture in yesterday's broadcast, but Proverbs 18, 1, that he who separates himself seeks his own way and he comes mm -hmm. into contention with all wisdom. Mm -hmm. We want to walk in wisdom. We, we don't need to separate ourselves. Uh, we need other people. We need relationships. Mm -hmm. And Ecclesiastics 4 Verse 10 talks about woe to him who's alone when he falls. It's really talking about the strength mm -hmm. of godly relationships. Let's turn to that scripture, Ephesians 4. We'll start reading in verse 8, in, and we'll read through verse 12 in Ephesians chapter 4. Or excuse me, not Ephesians, Ecclesiastics. Ecclesiastics. Um, so Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastics chapter 4 verse 8 through verse 10. Aaron, you want to read that? Yeah, it says, There is one alone without companion. He is neither son nor brother. Yet there is no end to all his labors, nor is his eyes satisfied with riches. But he never asks, For whom do I toil and deprive myself of good? This is also vanity and a grave misfortune. What scripture are you That was you Ecclesiastes 4, 8, and then going to 9. Okay, I, I needed to be in 9. Okay, go yeah. ahead. Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor, for if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? The one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So we talk about four things here that mm -hmm. are positive aspects of good relationships, productivity, strength, energy, and protection. Yeah, and I actually like verse eight because that kind of contrasts, you know, being isolated versus right. companionship uh, versus these divine connections, these divine relationships. So yeah. uh, he's just saying when you're off on your own, you're, you're going to just work and toil, and and that's really part of the the curse, you know, to to just work and have no what, nothing what, to show what for would it. it. It'd be sad to have all this money or whatever and have nobody to share it with. Mm -hmm. You know, no friendships, no relationships, no. Well, that's what I told my wife before. I got married later, you know, a little later than some people. I got married when I was 31, but um, I was I was very frugal as a single person. I wouldn't spend money on anything. I didn't, you know, I had a nice big <laughs> house, but I didn't have a single piece of new furniture. And just everything I bought was super cheap and used, you know, but uh, when I married my wife, I said, well, God, you know, bless me so you can spend it all <laughs> and get what you want and <laughs> and uh but uh yeah it's actually a, a blessing to be to for god to work through your relationships and you know it might be Amen. your marriage might be friendships maybe um people that you're helping at work in your neighborhood and your community at church you know serving is a great way to connect and make friends too right and that's what i wanted to talk about so you mm -hmm. stepped right into it mm -hmm. how can i get connected mm -hmm. And we have found at our church that if people work, if they serve, if they get involved with a group of people, whether it's ushers, greeters, children's serve, uh, wor workers, youth workers, you know, somewhere serving mm -hmm. if they get involved. Security, mm -hmm. what, whatever area that they get involved in. Worship, there's all kinds of different, or prayer team. Mm -hmm. There's so many ways to get involved. If mm -hmm. people just get in a good Bible study mm -hmm. sometimes, and mm -hmm. we have a number of Bible studies that mm -hmm. just go on. It's not that we're promoting them, but they're, people get in church, get to know people, you know? They, they make friends, you know? Yeah. My wife gets to go with other 
other uh, moms and ha they have dinner once a month and and uh so yeah you start serving others mm -hmm. right and it ministers to you mm -hmm. so in fact i have this as part of my message but through relationships we help others but ultimately god's helping us mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says, he who waters others will be watered himself. Mm -hmm. And mom says, you know, to me, I'm praying that. You've helped a lot of people, mm -hmm. so I'm praying that the, the back part of that comes back to you. Well, when I, when I sometimes, as a pastor, if I see someone who who's maybe gone through a great challenge or a, a difficulty, maybe, maybe um, um, like there's a gentleman who, who lost his wife a couple of years ago. I, I met with him, and I really encouraged him to, to be involved, to serve, um, not, not that... You know, I wasn't trying to to use him, but I knew it'd benefit him greatly to stay connected and and be a part and to to be right. giving, right. Um, even though he he had a lot of needs, you know, and and things that he needed to receive from God and from people. I I know that um, I man, when when you're giving of yourself at the same time, that that's when it helps you. Yeah, and yeah. he he stayed very connected. He he's helped with the the sound team and with the men's ministry and and. Yeah, he's doing really, really well. Um, and he has two, two, you know, adult, young adult children, right? And um, they, they've, they stayed connected, and um, he just went on with life. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to look at what God's given you, and not look at what you've lost. Mm -hmm. And so many people tend to look at what they don't have or what they've lost. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, that's really grief. Mm -hmm. Grief is an overwhelming sense of loss. And if you look at what you've lost instead of what you have. It's a devil's trick. Mm -hmm. And the devil will actually work a lot of destruction in your life mm -hmm. if you don't get that trick stopped. Mm -hmm. So get it stopped. Mm -hmm. I had a time in my life when I lost a lot of money mm -hmm. and I was praying to God and he said, don't look at what you lost, you look at what you have. And, and sometimes so, with the loss, the devil tries to attach shame to it. You know, you could feel right. shame for having made a bad business decision. You could feel felt shame through like a Loss of a relationship. Devil's always trying to condemn. Yeah. But you got to beat him at his game. Mm -hmm. Don't let him. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So there's ways we can get connected. We can serve. We can be a friend. You know, if you want a friend, be a friend. Yeah. And be a good friend. I like something that you mentioned um, in the previous broadcast about the, the order of relationships, the priority of relationships. And that... that um, showed me something. So so you said your relationship with God is first, mm -hmm. then with your spouse, then with your children, then like others. with your with your job, with others. And really also that that's that order of relationships, that that that's where you get your sense of value. Your sense of value first needs to come from your relationship with God. A lot of people Amen. are trying to get their sense of meaning, their per like men sometimes try to get their sense of value through their job. Right. Through their work relationships. Well my boss demoted me or fired me so i i'm worth nothing now and and they have right. you know have a big crisis um but really your value you're your, in christ yeah and it comes from your highest relationship right you know and sometimes sometimes um you know men men oftentimes sometimes get their sense of value through their job through their earnings women right. tend to get their sense of value through through relationships, relationships maybe with their spouse through you know their, their children and if there's a mm -hmm. shift there or close friends then, then they can feel Right. Like their their sense of value and purpose. If is... you don't have that right, if you don't have God first, mm -hmm. right, then your spouse, then your children in a traditional marriage, right, then then your <sighs> work and then others. If you don't have those things right, it'll create all kinds of. Habits. It's gonna it's it's gonna affect your purpose. You're gonna you're not gonna. Mom really has seen like women who are not prepared for their kids to go on to college, mm -hmm. right, and they don't quite have their relationship with God right, and then their their, right, spouse. their spouse right, yeah, and and so when their kids go up off to college it their whole world purpose, purpose breaks yeah. down yeah and, that, and that's what we want to move into in the last part yeah. of the broadcast today is living with purpose mm -hmm. there is a purpose for your life god has a purpose for your life and you need to find out what that is mm -hmm. figure that out and walk in the purpose of god so stay with us we're going to come back and begin to talk about living with purpose stay tuned we love you bless you Friends, I want to tell you about our product that we have available with this teaching, and we have a special offer. First of all, we have the Vision Series, and I have five messages that I taught on vision. You can get them on CD or digital download on our website. You can get them immediately. And then my Uncommon Favor book. This is my life story from just a few years back. It's a lot of different stories. A lot of people tell me when they read my Uncommon Favor book, it encouraged me because it gave me hope that if God did this for you, 
He would do it for me and he would help me. And there's so many ways that God has blessed me and helped me, but it's not unattainable. You see, God is no respecter of persons. He is a respecter of faith. So when you get a hold of the Word of God and begin to believe God, you can move into the vision and the plan that God has for your life through the favor and grace of God on your life. Thanks and blessings. Friends, I'm so glad that you stayed with us. We're gonna be talking about living with purpose. You know, Jesus had a purpose, Aaron. Mm -hmm. The scripture says in John, 1 John 3, verse eight, for this purpose was the Son of God manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Mm. Jesus was made known, he was revealed to destroy the works of the devil. And if we read the scriptures around that from 1 John chapter 3, verse five, through verse 10, we can see how Jesus destroyed the works of the devil. He came to put the devil out of business, praise mm -hmm. God. And uh, he'll do that in the last time, the devil will be cast in the lake of fire mm -hmm. and Jesus will reign for eternity. Mm. So in 1 John chapter three, we're gonna begin reading, verse eight says this, but we'll begin reading in verse five. Verse eight says, for this purpose was the Son of God manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. But if we go back to verse five, we begin to see how he did that. Mm -hmm. He says, you know that he, Jesus, was manifested to take away our sins mm -hmm. and in him is no sin. Mm -hmm. So the number one way that Jesus fulfilled his purpose of destroying the works of the devil is taking our sins. Mm -hmm. Then it says in verse six, whoever abides in him sins not. Whoever sins has not seen him, neither known him. So the, the, your practice of sin is directly connected, right, mm -hmm. to your lack or, or of relationship with God. Knowing Jesus. Right. Yeah. So knowing him. He, if you know him, you don't sin. Mm -hmm. If you really understand who he is and build a relationship with him, you walk out of sin. Mm-hmm. Right? Little children, let no man deceive you in verse seven. He that does righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous. So the number one way that Jesus destroyed the works of the devil was he took our sin. The number two way is he made us righteous. Mm -hmm. You see, righteous living is a result of the righteous life. Mm -hmm. So we were given the righteous life of Jesus as a gift. God made him, Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Mm -hmm. He says, he who commits sin is of the devil, for the devil sins from the beginning. And for this purpose, for this reason, was the Son of God manifested, made known and revealed, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Mm -hmm. He said, whoever is born of God does not commit sin. Mm -hmm. We're not in the practice of sin. Mm -hmm. For his seed, now this system does not commit. And, and when we read the rest of it, you actually see he's talking about your spirit. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. Mm -hmm. So your spirit, I am a spirit, I possess a soul, and I live in a body. You know, the New Testament, I believe 90% of the New Testament is written from a perspective of who we are in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get it, it's why so many people are so spiritually ignorant. Because mm -hmm. they're trying to, you know, approach a very spiritual aspect through natural understanding. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be, begin to understand the realm of the spirit. When you begin to understand, I am a spirit, I possess a soul, and I live in a body, then you begin to really understand what, you know, what's taking place. Mm -hmm. So when he says in 1 John 3, verse 9, whoever is born of God does not commit sin, he's talking about your spiritual condition. Mm -hmm. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. My spirit is born of God. Now, I could sin in my body, I could sin in my soul, mm -hmm. right, without my spirit being involved mm -hmm. in that. So if you're looking at that in a natural performance-based type thinking, you, you, you could say, well, I, I said a bad word and that's sin, so I'm not a child of God. Right. Because you're, you're making it It's a performance-based mentality rather than a grace-based mentality. Mm -hmm. So you got to get away from the performance aspect, from the physical, and, and begin to really understand who you are in the spirit. Mm -hmm. When you understand that you're, you've been changed in the spirit, it changes how you live your life. Mm -hmm. Here's a scripture that goes with that. Ephesians chapter five, verse eight says, for you were darkness, but now you are light mm -hmm. in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Walk as children of the light. The way that we walk is directly connected to our understanding of who we are. So we've got to understand who we are in Christ. Mm -hmm. Now he goes, in this, 1 John 3, 10, are the children of God made known, manifest, revealed, and the children of the devil. 
Whoever does not righteousness is not of God, neither is he who loves not his brother. So, mm -hmm. you know, we love our brother because we've got the love of God in us. Mm -hmm. But Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. And the number one way he did it is taking our sin. Mm -hmm. The number two way he did it is making us righteous. Mm -hmm. And the number three way he did it was imparting his divine righteous life mm -hmm. on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. His seed is in us. When you begin to understand that, it changes the way that you live your life. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to cause you to sin more mm -hmm. when you understand it. It causes you to sin less. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people uh, use grace as a <laughs> of sin. That's not what it's made for. Mm -hmm. When you really understand grace, it's empowerment. It mm -hmm. empowers you to live a victorious life. Now, the number two way I believe that Jesus destroyed the works of the devil is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. In fact, in Luke chapter 4, Jesus was went out in the wilderness, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, was tempted by the devil, and he overcame the devil in every temptation. And when he did that, he came back, it says in verse 14, that he returned in the power of the Spirit. Mm. And then when he went to Nazareth, his hometown, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day as his manner was, and he opened, the, he found the place in Isaiah where this is written, and he opened it. Mm -hmm. And he began to read from Isaiah chapter 61, what we know as Isaiah 61, verse 1 and 2. And this is what he said. We, it's recorded in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are bruised, mm. to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And right there, he closed the book and sat down and the eyes of all of them mm -hmm. in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he said, today is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. And I love, uh, you know, he's, he sensed what some of them were saying that like, is this not Joseph's son? And, and then he, he continued his message and he used two examples right. uh, of, of people of faith from the Old Testament. And both examples um, were actually people who, who received from God through through by faith in his grace. Right. He, he mentioned the, the women from Zarephath, mm -hmm. you know, um, so she was from Sidon. Sidon is where Jezebel is from. It wow. was the capital of Baal worship. But there is a woman there who, who, who put her faith in God and, and God sent Elijah to her and she was saved. This right. widow woman was saved. And he also mentions Naaman the Syrian right. um, who had leprosy he said there were many lepers in that day, but but Naaman was the one who received, you know, through the ministry of Elisha. And Naaman was the Syrian general, so the Syrians were one of the the strongest enemies of Israel. Of Israel. So two very ungodly places where these people came from, and Jesus used them as an example because he was trying to trying to to show that it's not based upon works. It's works. based on faith. It's based on faith, and, and these or religious not. people got very mad and they tried to kill him right then and there. Right. because of the two examples from, from Scripture that he used. Right. And so that's a really great example of faith. And you know, God is no respecter of persons, mm -hmm. but he is a respecter of faith. Mm -hmm. And so we need to keep believing Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so how did Jesus, you know, destroy the works of the devil? By taking our sin, mm -hmm. by making us righteous, by imparting his life to us, mm -hmm. and through the power of of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. right? The Spirit of the Lord's upon me. Now, how do we receive that? That's what that goes into where you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And that's just like Elijah, just like Elisha, just like this widow, uh, widow woman, just like this Syrian general. Mm -hmm. We receive it by faith. Mm -hmm. you, don't, it, you don't get it by osmosis. You must believe the gospel mm -hmm. to receive the promises mm -hmm. of the gospel. But if you believe it, you can receive it. Mm -hmm. You know, so many years ago, 45 years ago, I was 14 years old. I went to a Bible study. I heard Andrew Womack preaching. Mm -hmm. and, and something went off in my spirit mm -hmm. that there's a Bible full of promises that mm -hmm. I can believe. And you know, I started believing it. And my life has gotten better and better and better. Mm -hmm. And maybe I haven't arrived, but praise God, I've left. Mm -hmm. And you know what? God is no respecter of persons. He's a respecter of faith. And you know, just like God has blessed me and helped me, God will bless you and help you if you'll believe it. Mm -hmm. So just start believing what the Bible says about you. Mm -hmm.
Praise God. Get a vision that comes from the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Get a vision. We talked in the in the very beginning of this series last week about how do we get vision. We get vision from the Word of God. We get vision from the Holy Spirit. We get vision from people, you mm -hmm. know, uh, of God. So mm -hmm. get a vision for your life, mm -hmm. and it will help you move into the eternal destination mm -hmm. that God has for you. Mm -hmm. It'll help you accomplish your God given purpose. Mm -hmm. And so many people are are living so far less mm -hmm. than what God has for them. Mm -hmm. But it but you you don't have to stay there. Praise mm -hmm. God. You can believe God. You can move out of it. In fact, I've got this series, uh, Vision, and I'm offering with it my uncommon favor book, which is my life story. Mm -hmm. And it's just people read my book and they're like, man, that encouraged me. Mm -hmm. Because if it happened for you, it could happen for me, and that's mm -hmm. what we're saying. God's mm -hmm. no respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. He's a respecter of faith. But, you know, we've been sharing here for two weeks, you know, 10, you know, broadcasts just on what I teach in these five CDs on vision. Mm -hmm. And I had some people tell me, these are some of the most powerful messages that you ever shared mm -hmm. when I talked about, you know, uh, what a vision is, where we get a vision, and when I talked about experiencing grace. So mm -hmm. you don't want to... Uh, miss this opportunity to get this and share it with somebody. You can also listen to the broadcast free of charge. Mm -hmm. And I think you can watch free of charge also on the website, mm -hmm. charischristiancenter.com. So um, give us a call today if you need prayer, if you want product, if you want to become a partner, give us a call today. If you've never received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you want to receive that, just give us a call today. Mm -hmm. We have prayer ministers that will pray with you, that will minister to you. We have lots of testimonies mm -hmm. of people being healed and filled people, with the People Spirit call in all the time too. You know, I, I hear our prayer ministers just ministering to people all the time, just, uh, just powerful. Touches prayers me. it touches people yes so if you need prayer if you want product if you want to become a partner we'd love to hear from you god bless you blessings hi friends i'm pastor lawson purdue from Caris christian center in colorado springs we want to invite you to family camp meeting we're going to have special speakers mark and trina hankins congresswoman lauren bulbert full of the holy ghost and fire Philip Renner with special music, special teaching, Max Cornell, Ashley Terridis, myself, Aaron Purdue. We're going to have a great time. If you can't come in person, check us out online at charischristiancenter.com. Too many people live their lives without ever connecting to their God-given purpose. Learn the importance of having a vision and some practical steps for walking it out. God has a tremendous plan for your life. Start now and see it come to pass. Get the Vision Package, which includes the book Uncommon Favor and the Vision CD series for $24 or digital download for $15 when you call 719-418-4000 or visit charischristiancenter.com. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast has been made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000. Or to partner online, go to charischristiancenter.com slash give. You can write us at P.O. Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.